what would you say to a student right now who is struggling with anxiety or depression or both? Yeah. Um, and there's a, there's a lot going on. It's easy to feel de- depression and anxiety just seeping. It, 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 in fact, our generation, it, it will experience this more than any generation in history. Yeah. So what, what would you say to this? Yeah, absolutely. I always go back to what the Word says with everything. And um, my pastor has taught me that for years. Always go back to what the Word says. That's the only thing that we can hold on to. Exactly. It's the only thing. It's what we've got. People of faith, it's what we've got. And so, and it's the only thing we need to help us to live an overcoming life. To be firmly planted on the rock. Absolutely. Absolutely. So in 1 Peter 5, 7, it says, cast all of your cares on Him because He cares about you. Um, One translation says, cast your anxieties Mm. on Him because He cares about you. And I think a lot of the th- the reason that we struggle with anxiety and depression is because we're carrying things that we were never intended to carry yeah. and never meant to carry. And I've learned to ask myself this question, what things am I carrying that I should be casting? Wow. What things am I carrying in my life? Because God never meant for me to carry those things. Right. He wanted to carry those things for me because He cares about me. Once you have a revelation of that and you start casting those cares on Him, you're able to live freely and lightly and do all that he's called you to do. I found that a lot of the things that come up in our lives are just distractions and discouragements from the destiny God has for us, which is living a life on purpose, with purpose, to affect the lives of other people. And a lot of times God, uh, God, will, um, God will deal with us about certain things that if we're in his presence, he'll deal with us about those things that we need to go ahead and cast. And so I, I found even in my own life recently with some ministry things and some things that were out of my control that I was allowing them to stress me out. And mm. I think we can all be that way. Yeah. Um, where I was allowing them to stress me out. And I remember getting into the presence of God and him just dealing with me. You never meant to carry that anyways. That's why you feel the way that you do. Wow. You need to cast that and you need to stay focused and don't lose your confidence because I've got it all worked out. And so sometimes it's just reminding ourselves, he's God, we're not. It's reminding ourselves that, hey, he cares about us so much. He cares about our lives more than we care about our lives. He cares about our success more than we care about our success. He cares about um, people and uh, the people that we're called to reach more than we care about it. And so when we understand that, um, there are those things. And I want to make sure to say this. If you are struggling with depression and it's something that, um, you're taking medication for. Am I saying don't stop taking the medication? That's not at all what I'm saying. I, I'm, I don't, I'm not against medication. I think that you can take medication and still be in faith. But here's what I'd encourage you to do while you're taking that medication for that thing. Speak over yourself. Yes. Speak, God, I thank you that I'm no longer depressed, but God, I'm full of joy. Mm. God, I no longer have this stress, but God, I'm full of your peace that passes all understanding. It rules in my heart and mind as I keep my focus on you. Declare things over yourself. If you don't have confessions that you speak over yourself and over your life, get a list of confessions in the area of struggle that you have and start to speak those things over your life. And I believe that if you'll start to speak those things out of your mouth, those are faith-filled words. And eventually you won't need the medication. I, I've seen that yeah. happen multiple yeah. times where somebody has taken medication, but every single time they'll say a word of faith over themselves. They'll confess the right thing over themselves. Each time they take take the medication. Each, each time they take the medication. Just as a reminder, I'm gonna take this because mm. it's what I need to do right now. But God's but, word says. But God's word says this. And so because I've seen other people go ahead and be like, I'm gonna dismiss the medication for whatever it is. Right. And then all of a sudden they're back in the same what medication Yeah, because there's does. man's side and there's God's side. Exactly. Yeah. And I believe it's the natural and the supernatural yes. working together that makes a powerful force for God. So God can use natural means yeah. to get you to a level playing field and then as you're speaking and declaring what you're doing is you're speaking outwards of faith, but you're also building up your faith. That's good. And so a lot of times we want to just we hear something and we want to just throw it away. No, just start to speak the right thing over yourself. And I think that's important because um, I believe that God wants us to walk in divine healing yeah. from anxiety yes. and depression. Um, I heard a uh, pastor say it this way, that a lot of times when we're uh, dealing with anxiety, what is the middle letter? What's in the center of anxiety? It's I. Mm. It's I. It's a, it's a, a you it's focus. It's what you can do on your own it's instead of you, what God can yeah, do. It's yeah. a you focus. Get rid of the you focus and get a God focus. Yeah. What does this look like in light of how big my God is? 
like this this thing that I'm dealing with, this stress that I'm dealing with, it, it's so small. But a lot of times we don't we don't get to that point and that perspective. So my encouragement would be get into the presence of God, begin to magnify mm. Him, because whatever you magnify in your life, you make bigger. It doesn't make yeah. God bigger. God was always that big. It just makes your perspective of Him greater, and you start to see how big, how mighty, how vast, how powerful He actually is. And that is the key uh, to breaking any chain of bondage. That is the key to freedom. That's Mm. the key to freedom from anxiety, is reminding yourself, God is bigger, God is greater than anything that I'm facing, any struggle that I'm having. And I believe that you can have freedom and healing and wholeness in every area of your life. That's what Jesus died on the cross, rose again with the victory for. He died and rose again, proclaiming victory so that we could have victory over everything that comes against us. And I'm at this point in my life where if Jesus paid for it, man, I want to walk in it. And so I'm not going to settle for anything less than Jesus paid for. And so I think we all have to, as followers of Jesus, get that same tenacity about ourselves. Not a passivity about our faith, but a tenacity about our faith. You have authority that's been given to you by God. Jesus said, I've been given authority and I'm giving you the authority. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever Mm -hmm. you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. I'm giving you this authority. That authority is all that we would ever need to go ahead and um, just activate the power of God into whatever situation we're going through. I think once we have a revelation that I don't have to stand back passively and allow things that I should be taking my authority over. Hmm. But a lot of times we see this, right? We see Christians that don't understand their authority, that they passively allow instead of actively taking and using their authority right. over the thing. And and I think the authority of the believer, it's such yes. an important thing for us to understand and to utilize. Yep. Again, if Jesus paid for it, man, I want to I utilize all of yeah. it. So such a huge thing. For That's sure. good.